This is Political Common Sense for America. I'm Brian Boheim, the political engineer. And in this particular segment, I want to do something just a little different. Recently, I was asked, what was the greatest speech I ever heard? And in my memory, I remember a small segment of a speech that Dr. Martin Luther King gave that I had named the Street Sweeper. So I went to search for that particular speech and, and couldn't find an audio version of him presenting that speech. But digging through my files, I found a transcript of it. And I think that the, the transcript of this speech, the speech is actually called, What is Your Life's Blueprint? I think it's worth hearing. So, meaning only the greatest respect to Dr. King, I will read his tra the transcript and I hope I do it justice. To put it in context, this speech was given six months before his assassination. Dr. King was speaking to a group of students at Barrett Junior High in Philadelphia on October 26, 1967. I want to ask you a question, and that is, what is your life's blueprint? Whenever a building is constructed, you usually have an architect who draws a blueprint, and that blueprint serves as the pattern, as the guide. And a building is not well erected without a good, solid blueprint. Now, each of you is in the process of building the structure of your lives. And the question is whether you have a proper and solid, sound blueprint. I want to suggest some of the things that should begin your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your worth, and your own somebodiness. Don't allow anyone to make you feel that you're nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have as the basic principle the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. You're going to be deciding as the days, as the years unfold, what you will do in your life, what your life's work will be. Set out to do it well. And I say to you, my young friends, doors are opening to you. Doors of opportunity that were not open to your mothers and your fathers. And the great challenge facing you is to be ready to face these doors as they open. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great essayist, said in a lecture in 1871, If a man can write a better book, or preach a better sermon, or make a better mousetrap than his neighbor, even if he builds his house in the woods, the world will make a beaten path to his door. This hasn't always been true, but it will become increasingly true. And so I would urge you to study hard, to burn the midnight oil. I would say to you, don't drop out of school. I understand all the sociological reasons, but I urge you that in spite of your economic plight, in spite of the situation you're forced to live in, stay in school. And when you discover what you will be in your life, set out, uh, set out to do it as if God Almighty called you at this particular moment in history to do it. Don't just set out to do a good job. Set out to do such a good job that the living, the dead, and the unborn couldn't do it any better. If it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Leonton Price sings before the Metropolitan Opera. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, Here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. If you can't be a pine at the top of the hill, be a shrub in the valley, but be the best little shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be a sun, be a star. 
for it isn't by size that you win or fail. Be the best of whatever you are. You've been listening to 5 Minutes of Political Common Sense for America. I'm Brian Boheim, the political engineer. And normally I plug my book at this point, but instead I'd like to take this time to acknowledge Dr. King for his awareness and understanding in 1967 that education was the key to changing one's lot in life, that hard work, perseverance, and a belief in oneself was going to change more than all the politics and all of the legislation that could come about. And I just wish that our current political leaders and our social leaders would focus on the same things Dr. King focused on in 1967, teaching our kids and helping point our kids down the path of success and helping them find a real blueprint to follow. Until next time, you be safe out there.